right. We're on. We're on. Well, hello, all you DTLT Today fans out there. We know there's at least a couple of you. And That's probably right. a few Coca-Cola fans you. as well. <laughs> <laughs> or at least soda fans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at I that. I think I'll have a Coke. Oh. <laughs> I think I'll like a good Coke. I've had, too, I've had too many already today, so too, I'm going to uh, pass. Yeah, lubricate a conversation. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't resist the lure, yeah. could you? I, I fucking love Coke. Right. <laughs> what are we talking about? Um, well, yesterday we, we talked a little bit about the, um, what did we talk about yesterday? The MOOCs, and, and no, or a follow-up no. to the, I'm sorry, follow-up to the MOOCs, sort of. I, my, 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 I'm yesterday. sorry. Let, let's go back a day. We talked uh, about a little bit about assessment. Right. The assessment yeah. report and yeah. how we were going to maybe change how our division, how well, ed tech division should be assessed. It was a typical <laughs> conversation about assessment. You talk a lot and nothing gets done. Right. Exactly, exactly. So now assessment. maybe today we can talk a little bit about you know, doing something and not necessarily needing to be assessed or assessment in a different way. That's right. Um, my, my thinking was to talk today about a subject that, that piggybacks on the other stuff. And I think that's what yeah. we've done so far. We don't have to keep doing this, mm -hmm. um, but I just thought it was, it was kind of um, um, I enjoy interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy piggybacking. Okay, good. I'm right my bag is killing me. I'm right behind you. I'll that carry you both then. Okay. That's right. Why don't you? <laughs> um, so today I discovered, and, and um, a happy discovery, uh, Gardner Campbell had an article in the Campus Technology, uh, at least the online, I assume that the printed version comes <laughs> out soon as well, mm -hmm. um, entitled Narrate, Curate, Share, How Blogging Can Catalyze Learning. Um, and after yesterday's discussion, one of our uh, faithful audience members, um, not trivial, that's right. Michael mm -hmm. Branson Smith. Michael Branson. Um, had Ooh. given us a link to a CUNY professor, right? Yep. John Ugaretz. Uh, Joe. Joe, I'm sorry, Joe Ugaretz. He's actually the director of technology for the Honors College right now. He runs the um, I te Technology Instructional Fellows, mm -hmm. Instructional Technology Fellows, which I was a part of at CUNY. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, he wrote, or, or I guess this is back in April, but he, he talked about this idea of collect reflect, present, which I've kind of thought, you know, it's, it's the same kind of basic concept. Right. Right. Um, and one of my favorite quotes from what he talked about is, is to promote this alternate assessment where learners and learning are explored and understood and not just rated and scored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of today what we're talking about is, you know, why blogging? You know, why, why would we blog and how do we get students motivated to blog? Right, That's and he right. pointed out right from the get-go that Every school that he's brought it to, of course, Mary Washington and then Baylor and now Virginia Tech, the, yeah. they instantly go to FERPA to how do you grade a blog, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, how do you motivate students to do it? Is it voluntary? Are you forcing them to do it? If it's forced, is that a good thing or not? Right. And, um, and that was some of the things, I guess, that you had asked him about what his process was as a faculty member back at Mary Washington. Yeah, and when, well, the whole, uh, the, the, post he links to at the back was at the end of that article right. mm -hmm. is a post when the reverend asked me a question which was basically you know I've never seen a professor um, use blogs so intelligently and thoughtfully and get so much as of his students as I did Gardner Campbell when I was working on him as an instructional technologist and I was amazed by it and tried to learn as much as I could but my question was him, how did he do it and I think the way he did it and the way he kind of framed it, and he talks about that in the post, I'd read that, but it was always not about here's the prescription, mm -hmm. here's what you need to do. It was about him encouraging and kind of infusing his students with excitement, with enthusiasm, and with a sense that they did have something to share, did have something to learn, and did have something to communicate with others. Mm -hmm. And I think there's that, and that's an intangible. Right. And then you take that and you bring in kind of the network effects to a community, to an uh, institution and beyond, and then you start to see that blogging as a means of assessing a community's health. That's mm -hmm. that whole right. APGAR test he talks about, but the health of an institution is huge. I mean, yeah. there's a whole different set of assessment that I would love to put time in sure. in that regard. Exactly. I, I liked, we, we talked yesterday a little bit about the kind of the corporate approach to education. And what I liked yeah. about, about Gardner's kind of framing of all of this is, is the idea that a citizen is contributing 
to the human record, mm -hmm. and that was a kind of a, a direct quote from from mm -hmm. his his article. Um, you know, talk about assessment. You know, how someone can add value to society mm -hmm. um, is, I, I think, really what we're after here, as a, as opposed to just kind of what what students can get out of it for themselves and then leave and take whatever that is with them. So that's what's great about Gardner is Gardner always brings everything to the next level. Right. It's like it's not simply about business. Um, uh, semantics or business kind of dynamics or data or anything. It's about the humanistic endeavor to make this place in our thinking and our world better in some, you know, real way. Right. And so he brings that to it and then you want to get behind a guy like that who thinks about, <laughs> you know, assessment as it is going to make our world and our people and our culture greater and richer and stuff. Right. You never hear that talked about when we talk about assessment. Mm. It's always like, did the students have X? Did they have Y? You know, were they fed properly? You know, are <laughs> bones showing in their ribs? It's like, what? You know, it has nothing to do with the kind of pleasure and meaning of life. Exactly. Well, I love uh, when he talks about the share part of it, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, which really gets back to the why you do this. You share it out, and that's really where the power is behind it. And he points to Alan Levine's Amazing Stories yep. of Openness yeah. and says, great. go there, and I'll link to that in the show notes as well. If you want to see what power blogs can have, what, you know, what strength can be behind it when you put your stuff out there, right. then that's the perfect example is this cumulative uh, list of videos that he had taken of people just putting their stuff out there and these amazing things that have happened because of it. Sure. And he and he drives home the point about learners becoming aware of where they fit in, yeah, yeah. Um, into the the larger scheme of things. You know, in regarding those car those contributions that they're making. Absolutely. Um, and it's another, you know, it's this meta level, as he calls it, of of where their learning, you know, can grow to and expand to. And it's interesting to think of go back to both the metacognition, which the blogging process of reflection and curation is all about, mm -hmm. but then kind of marry that to Alan Levine's amazing stories of openness. And Amazing Stories of Openness is such a great example because it's so not pedantic. Right. It's so like, here's a student's example of the great work or a person's example of what they got by sharing openly as a kind of assessment, real life. Like, you know, Stephen Downs talks about, I got a trip to Australia for putting up a bunch of logical fallacies or mm -hmm. I got this or that. And sure. that stuff's amazing. And mm -hmm. like, we don't have any room in our data-driven structures for amazing. <laughs> yeah. sure. You know, that's why it's great that Alan kind of says, well, no, let's take ourselves out of that and yep. look at, let's hear a narrative about what's amazing about it. And it's anecdotal, but it's not. Right. But, it, and, and, but in those anecdotes, we immediately see the value. And, and we at Mary Washington, yep. we always, when we talk about blogs at Mary Washington, we always tell the story about the student who is in theater class Yep. who was directing a play mm -hmm. and she was really struggling with with how it was going how she was setting up the production of it um, how it should be directed what the characters meant to each other and 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 really trying to figure mm -hmm. things out and she gets a comment from the playwright and and the playwright yeah, kind of right. says you're on the right track you're doing great it's great to see how you're interpreting this yeah. go with your feelings um, you know, and, and and to have that kind of feedback from yeah. from someone has got to be you know to the student just just mind blowing. And we never tell the follow up story to that when the playwright gets on and was like, and if you screw up my play, you're yeah. dead. Well, there was yeah. that, but I you know we wanted to end the story in you know kind of a happy, happy way. No. Yeah, you'll never work in this town again. The threats and the lawsuits you know are kind of you know diminish the story. I think. Well, That's right. But. I will say one thing that I w I wish there was another word for curate. He he mentions <laughs> curating. Right. Yeah. Uh, so does Leslie Madsen Brooks, by the way. She yeah. hates the way people use curate. Well, I understand the philosophy behind it, and I think it's it's great as an idea, but when someone says you should be curating what you put online, I hear filter. I hear you should be deciding what things should and should not go on there, and that's all well and good, but at the same time, yeah. it sets the tone for where you are on the web, and it's mm -hmm. one where you're restricting yourself. You're creating these circles in Google+. Plus. You're, you're yeah. deciding how open you're going to be, and it just seems a little bit at odds with this idea mm -hmm. that of narrating your process, being out in the open, and amazing mm -hmm. things will happen. I, I think it, you might be able to maybe interpret it as if you think of a museum collection. It may mm -hmm. just be the rotation kind of, of, of what you put out on a given 
you know, at, at a given point in time yeah. where you've got all this great stuff, you know, you, you, you choose to, to put out what's, what's relevant at a time or something like that, as opposed to just simply filtering it. And you hope all that work gets, gets shown and exposed. I'm just going to make sure that Timmy's watching the Twitter stream. And while he is doing yeah. his job, I'm going to do mine. <laughs> um, one of the things that's interesting, and I think it's a problem that Gardner kind of doesn't really mention in his article, and it's one that I think of, you know, you have an honors college blogging kind of, um, what is it, what do you call it? Like, not a pilot program, whatever, initiative, right? And you have all these students blogging. And Gardner, no one can kind of inspire the student to blog like Gardner. But then when you have it as a requirement for this process mm -hmm. and it becomes this aggregate, there is this idea of how the students understand and receive this yep. and how they understand blogging. And one of the things that's kind of interesting is how do you kind of, from the beginning, help them to understand that this is a valuable process and that blogging isn't just another thing mm -hmm. you got to do. I mean, we've talked about this and why blogging sucks, right? Right. Higher ed. That's right. How do we avoid that on the mm -hmm. other side? Because I listen to Gardner talk about blogs all day. Right. But we've also seen the travesty that blogs can become in the wrong hands. So. And Dr. Garcia correctly says that curating, going back to what I was saying, is a lot about after the process, things that are already done, and you're deciding how to archive them and where to put them out. That's a good point. So taking mm -hmm. care of what's to be archived is a part of the curation process. Yes, yeah. so, okay. I like that. What else? Well, I, you... It's, uh, to me, it's always an interesting question about how students can get excited about this. And I, and I think one of the things that, that we deal with constantly is instructors, professors come to us and they say, I think I want to try out blogs. You know, I think I want to do blogs in my class, but, you know, do you have any suggestions as, as to do this? And I, and I always think to myself, and I don't necessarily ask them directly, but I, I just think, you know, do you believe in blogs? You yeah, know, do you believe right. in blogs in the first place, or, or are you skeptical about them? Because if you're skeptical about them, it's not going to be successful. And That's good right. luck trying to get this, you know, any kind of uh, good material out there. You you may get some students who want to do this, but but not because of any direction from the faculty. That's a faculty. great question. You said, do you blog? Are you modeling <laughs> you the process for right. your yeah. students? Right. Are you going? Are you even going to be in the trenches with them, or are you just going to tell them, I want you to be doing this, and then, you know, what the hell are you doing? Since we're on a Gardner Campbell themed thing, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little Gardner Campbell story that okay. I think is one of the best that kind of builds into this. Is I was doing an interview with Gardner with Jerry Bain of Educause, and Gardner was talking about this stuff and how some faculty say, let's do blogs, let's do Twitter, let's do wikis, but don't do it themselves. Mm. And he used this kind of metaphor, which I think is brilliant, or simile. He's like, that's like saying, you know what, I want you to read. Um, Scarlet Letter by uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. I've read it. I don't really love it. You know, I mean, I thought it was a good book maybe then, but I'm not going to read it again, but I think you should. And if you approach, like, blogging, like, this is something you should do. Everyone's doing it. I'm not going to do it because I would never blog, but I think it's a good idea for you to get that experience. What do they think the student's going to be? He's going to be like, uh, okay, I don't have to blog. Yeah. yeah. And I, th I think when it, if faculty are able to to kind of look at the at the learning aspect and, and 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 kind of take this approach and say, this is reflection. This is this is going to be a valuable piece to this course. This is going to be about the process of of where you are in a given moment. You can see from beginning to end, from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester, this this timeline of where you were and and the kinds of things you were thinking about. Um, that's what the value of blogging is, and it and it pr provides a rich you know tapestry of, of it, when, you, when you add all the students' blogs together of, of where this class was and where they went to. And so. to refer back to another episode Tim Owens and I did um, on the study of broad blogs, mm -hmm. one of the things that trips me about, I mean, that's been about a year old, that process, almost a year and a half. We have like 600 posts, and there are some of the best posts on UMW blogs. They have nothing to do with classes per se, right. but it's this student really narrating their trip right. overseas and their experience. And, mm -hmm. You know, the images are awesome, the videos are awesome, they're personal, they're usually talking with their family and stuff, but for me, that's some of the most compelling stuff right. on UMW blogs right now. And that's yeah. a good point of, of, of also this stuff not just existing within the course itself, but bringing the outside in yeah. and, and pushing the, out, the inside out and, and combining those things because we don't do this stuff in a vacuum. Yeah. And that's really the point that Gardner always said that I come back to, and I know we have 10 seconds, but a, a blogging platform that's good should really, in some ways, expose the life of a mind of a university. Yep. And I believe that. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, that makes a cute little... actually make a little sound. It does make a little sound. Well, that shows us that our time is up for today. So and, uh, There's the how. All right. So on that note... <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I think us. we should say, yep. always Coca-Cola and peace out. <laughs>